Hey everyone, the name is Eric Thor and the topic of today's video is how you think, how you make decisions and how your mind makes things happen in life for you. And the introduction of this video is about the cognitive functions. It is a cognitive functions revisited video but it's also kind of a summary for the beginner. But still, if you're an advanced user this does not mean you should tune out because truly this covers some new theories and some new insights I gained after I studied and organized the cognitive functions and studied them in relation to the Enneagram. I am the new Jungian perspectivist to understand what cognitive functions play a healthy role in our psyche and which play a more problematic role in our psyche. And it's about identifying healthy thinking habits and understanding unhealthy thinking habits in yourself. Now I believe there are four predominant states that we all switch between at all times in our life. The green, red, blue and yellow states and I want to first begin by saying that at first the green state is a director state. In its basic balanced nature it's primarily about direction. How am I going to get from point A to point B? How am I going to make this dream happen? How am I going to make this go the way I want it to go. How am I gonna fulfill my dreams? How am I gonna have friends, strong relationships? How am I gonna be a good person? How am I gonna live up to my parents' expectations? When you're thinking about these things, you're all engaging in the direction process. Uh, and there are a group of kind of functions involved in this process. And depending on which personality type you are, you will use and value some more than others. After this process there is the actor process and the actor process is of course like when we are in life and when we are making things happen and when new ideas are coming up and new things are happening and there are tugs inside of us and we have like ideas and we see things we want and we get a dream or a vision or an idea and a possibility and we feel this urge to act on it. When we do this, when we speak out what we're thinking, when we express what's in our head, when we talk about and do things, in the moment, in the real-time experience, that's when we're engaging in the actor functions. When we're engaging in the writer functions, we're rather thinking about and reflecting on open-mindedly where we are in life, what happened to us, what we have experienced. And what I've found is that the writer is the kind of person that will spend a lot of time reflecting on and processing their experiences, what they've seen, what they've heard. Sometimes they do so theoretically, sometimes they do so practically, sometimes they do so autobiographically, sometimes they do so as kind of a fantasy or a fictional idea, and sometimes they do it as a realistic description of the experience that you just had. The right to function is what you do to consider what you've experienced, what you've seen, what is opportune, what is possible, but it has nothing to do with what is good or what is bad. When you start thinking about what's good or what's bad, what you should have done, what you shouldn't have done, what you should have done differently, how you could have done it better, how you could have improved, what your score was on the task, how good you did it, that is when you engage in the evaluator functions. And this evaluator function starts with the question of your conscience. You could say it starts with the question of processed discernment, a processing of and reflection on your decisions and your actions and what you've done, but also on what other people have done, what you've seen other people do, what you've seen is good or what you've seen is smart. The writer function is processed perception, which is simply a processing of experience and ideas, ideas that are new, that have no question of what's good or bad, but that simply are. Ideas of uh, that have no necessary value in itself but that are interesting because they are information and because information is predominantly interesting. The actor function is a question of controlled perception where we engage and use information to make decisions based on our idea, based on creativity, based on a vision, based on some system of order or based on your a reflex or an instinct or impulse inside of you. Something that, a decision that has no necessarily good or bad property, but that is fun or stimulating or interesting, something you just want to say or something you just want to get out of there, even no matter if it's good or bad. Control discernment, that's when you're thinking about 
in a way, um, what is the smart decision to make right now? What is the strategic thing to do? What is the tactical thing to do? What is the ethical thing to do? When you're making decisions based on a system of values, and when you're acting out and trying to achieve and to do something in a smart or strategic or ethical or ideological manner, that's when you're engaging in controlled discernment. So perception is how we gain information and process information. Discernment is how we process information. Control is how we make decisions. And processing is reflection. And when you look at it, what it comes down to, what I found so interesting, is that the red types typically will say that they want to go on the heart. They want to follow their heart. That's, what a, that's a typical red quote, follow your heart. Um, the green type will say, go with your gut. Go what you feel is right. Go with what you feel is wrong. <laughs> okay, don't go with what you feel is wrong. Don't. <laughs> that's uh, really the green type... Uh, uh, sees and uses and imagines, uh, imagines themselves using the gut to make decisions, where the blue type imagines themselves using the head. Now I didn't, uh, I don't necessarily know a perfect example for the yellow type, but maybe the eye or perception or uh, trust what you see or trust what you feel is uh, like go uh, go with what you see and accept uh, and be open to different ideas. Um, Basically, the gut is a feeling about what is smart, tactical, stupid, or ethical, where the heart is a dream about what we want, desire, and wish for. And I can see how these can look, you can, how you can think about these from different perspectives. So the heart does bring to mind feeling or thinking. Uh, but to me, the heart reflects things that we want that we can't explain often. Like we want a car, or we want to go on an adventure, we want to go to a country, but we've never been there before. We don't know if that's smart, or if it's the smart thing to do, or if it's ethical, or... Uh, the first priority of the heart is simply what we dream of, what we imagine is possible, what we have this tug towards, what our instinct is telling us, what we have like this yearning for to do. Uh, the gut is something more processed, you know, how it goes through, like the gut goes through this process where it conscientiously goes through and molds and it shapes experience and draws value out of it and discards everything you want that you can't explain or that you can't see any actual value of. So there is an important distinction here, I think, and I think the gut fits much better for green than the heart. If you look at the Enneagram correlations, 189 fits the best for the green types, 2, 3, and 4 for the red types, 5, 6, and 7 for the blue types, SX, SO, SP for the yellow types. So uh, because the 2, 3, and 4 talk so much about like love and what you want and what you dream of, uh, because the 5, 6, and 7 talk so much about what's smart and what's stupid and what's a good idea and what's not, um, it fits best with blue. Because the 1, 8, and 9 talk so much about decision making and expressing what you want and what you believe in, or not, for the case of the 9, uh, it fits a lot for green. The SX, the SO, and SP are the least integrated with the system, and it's hard to find perfect correlations here, because the theories on the instincts are not as developed as the theories on the numbers. Now looking at the individual functions of each center, Starting with the gut center, starting with the, uh, the controlled discernment or uh, conscientious decision making. Uh, first you want to look at feeling and judging, feeling and perceiving, thinking and judging, and thinking and perceiving. So when you use ideology to determine what is the smart way to achieve something, to accomplish something, then you use feeling and judging. Uh, when you're thinking about what's ethical or what's good for the individual or for the person, uh, then I think uh, feeling and perceiving comes much more into it. Like what's ethical, what is uh, good or bad for you or for other people. When you're thinking about thinking and judging, you're probably going to be thinking about strategy and what is strategical or what works best with a framework or a discipline or with a system of ideas or thoughts. When you're using thinking and perceiving, you're going to be thinking about what's tactical in the situation, using the rules you see around you to your advantage. 
when you're engaging in the actor functions, you'll be, you'll be engaging in intuition or perceiving, intuition or judging, sensing or judging, or sensing and perceiving. So an ENFP will primarily uh, act out ideas, dialogues, and like whims in the sense of, uh, I want this or I want that in the moment, where the NJ will go with, this is my long-term idea or my long-term vision, and this is what I will act out. They will wander, move towards a long-term vision. The sensing and judging type will move with routine, with a sense of order. I will move on and repeat and recur and do over until I master something. Sensing and perceiving will go based on reflex or based on like this in the moment action or reaction to something that's happening before you. So turning it against each other, sensing and perceiving goes typically with the flow, where intuition and perceiving typically goes against the flow, at least from the perspective of reality. Uh, the blue type, the EF, goes with uh, what is culturally appropriate, what's good for the group, what's good for overall society. Um, the EIF type values and makes decisions based on what the individual thinks or what you personally think or what another person you care about necessarily thinks is good. Uh, the EF type will often seek to consult and see what other people think and what uh, different people say is good or bad. Where the ET type will look at the system and what the system typically values and favors. What uh, appears to be uh, in high demand in society. What appears to be popular. What appears to be mainstream to some extent. Where the IT will look at what appears to be... Um, best thing in this situation, what gave the most results here or in that particular moment. Uh, you could say that the ET is about the system overall, where the IT is about the component, like how well is this particular component in this machine or in this system performing? How good is this work you're doing? How good is this happening? Uh, what, how smart or how, <laughs> how efficiently is this happening? Looking at finally the writer function, C and I and I S and E S. E N is typically about the kind of what we dream of, where I N is about this uh, kind of theory that we have about something, where I S is this kind of lesson that we've learned from something, and E S is about this kind of experience that we've had that we've we're thinking about. So with all this in mind. Um, you will be using all of these cognitive functions, and the thing is, each of them represent a block in you. Typically, an INTJ who's using feeling and judging too much is going to have a certain gut block, a block in their decision-making skills, because they will lack that kind of conscientiousness that is typically necessary in solid and balanced gut judgments. So what will be off about the INTJ who's engaging in feeling and judging is that they kind of uh, lose touch with or overuse or underuse the gut or restrain it too much or keep it back. And uh, vice versa for the INFJ using thinking and judging too much. The question of what is strategic is not necessarily good for the INFJ to consider because it often punctures their decision-making skills, making them... Um, less, more sloppy about their decisions and making them to some extent overuse or over engage in the gut or make decisions that they don't really believe in necessarily or that they don't necessarily think are good or smart. And this is of course because the INFJ doesn't value thinking and the INTJ doesn't value feeling and that means when you don't value something and you engage in it you're doing something that you don't like and you're gonna get, you're gonna feel bad about that, you're not gonna feel good about that. Similarly, an ESFP who engages in NP is going to have a heart block, and an INFP who engages in ES is going to have an experience block, and uh, that ES will block out what they see or what they think is true. Similarly, finally, an ENFP who is too much in introversion and thinking will become overly focused on the individual components to an extent where it stresses them, to the extent where it bores them and numbs them. So it's not always positive to engage in and to develop the other processes, 
It is only po only positive to develop them to the extent where that is necessary, not beyond that. Beyond that, you should seek to engage in and do things that you find fun and stimulating. And leave the other things up to others. Let other people do what they love and let yourself do what you love. Be yourself. And I think, because I think most of these Enneagram blocks that we talk about represent just how they represent blocks. They represent fixations. And I think most of these fixations occur when we don't develop our cognitive functions properly. When we don't individuate. When we don't learn to master our thoughts and uh, to trust our thoughts and to trust our eye and to trust our gut, to trust our heart, which is to trust what we really want. An INFP or an INFJ will not want or dream of sensing and if they pursue it and if they go for it anyways they won't feel happy and that's the tree block of them. <laughs> that's the massive revelation I've had like over these past weeks. And I think we're opening up a rabbit hole here in learning about each individual fixation, each individual enneagram type and how it emerges because we don't individuate into our Jungian type, into our Jungian flow type. So that's what Neo Jungian typology does. Neo Jungian typology shows you how to come in touch with your functions and how to find flow. So that's all for today. I hope you all enjoyed this video and I hope to see you guys tomorrow.